So this is my buddy, John Seville, and he, um, we ca I call him my crazy Aussie because uh, he hails from Australia, but he lives in Canada. And um, he's a spitfire, this guy. I mean, I, I was introduced to him probably about eight or nine years ago, and we hit it off immediately. He's just got that firehouse, just get right at it attitude of trading the markets. He's so passionate about it. And a lot like Brian Stickney, like he lives it. I, I, I always joke with Johnny you can go, you can mic up if you want, Johnny. I always joke with Johnny about how I'm going to take insurance out on him because he'll send me a text where he's in some wild ass place somewhere in some <laughs> remote location where he's hanging from a tree with a koala bear trying to get internet so he can do a webinar <laughs> And um, that's his commitment. Okay, so let's talk about commitment, right? I mean, he just got quarantined in Australia for a very long time. We were on opposite ends of the time zones. And Johnny was changed his whole sleeping pattern to be able to trade the markets, his entire sleeping pattern. And that is, that's proof in the pudding that that's what he does for a living. That's how he makes his money. And it affords him this lifestyle where he can be basically, like, like Stickney said, he can be homeless. He can be anywhere and nowhere, right? As long as they have an internet that supports your, uh, your video situation, Johnny. Am I right? <laughs> well, it's, fun, it's funny you mentioned that. I'm, I'm actually talking to you from, the, uh, from my RV motorhome. I was just about to say, are you in an RV? In, <laughs> city, <laughs> in, uh, in Jasper oh. National Park. Yep. <laughs> well, at least you're not in the hospital. So. No, that's right. I feel about it today. Um, we, well, Johnny, we, welcome to today. And you guys, I think y'all are going to really enjoy this presentation. He always brings a lot of... Um, a lot of I'm talking intensity to his passion about the market. And you're going to walk away with a great idea about how you can trade better. And this guy lives, eats, breathes, and apparently drives RVs around the world. <laughs> in the market. So, so Johnny, you can, uh, you can take the mic. Right on. Th thank you so much. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And thank you, Jeanette. Thank you, Rolly. Thank you to everyone and all the great speakers that have come before me for putting on a great event for everyone here. And I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I've got a lot of great stuff to share with you as well. And uh, I'll just, just get my screen up. Back off your mic just a hair. You get like there a little go. bit of static how's, whenever how's, you... Uh, how's that? Is that a bit better? That's better. Go ahead. Excellent. Okay. So um, we've got a, a whole bunch of stuff uh, to talk about. I mean, we've, we've been on this show before talking about smart money trading from an insider's perspective. Uh, for those of you that joined us in the last uh, um, uh, event, uh, we're gonna, we'll touch on that again today as well. But today's presentation, we're going to go one layer deeper into a topic that we haven't presented in this format before, which is uh, having a focus on the patterns and probabilities and the market cycles that are going on. Uh, we'll start out with a quick disclaimer that, of course, this is for educational purposes only. Uh, we're not a, a financial advisor in any jurisdictional province, and many of the positions that we will be discussing are being held by the Acorn Wealth Trading Account or myself personally uh, for full disclosure purposes. Um, uh, a little bit of a history. I mean, as Jeanette said, I've known uh, Jeanette and the guys over at, uh, at Westmark for, for years. Um, Acorn started out in November 2007. And uh, I think one of our biggest claims to fame has been our ability to track the, the ebbs and flows of smart money and see when, you know, everyone's leaving the party that we probably want to be following suit. And uh, we saw big sell signs uh, in, the, uh, in the market. Uh, in uh, in 2007, we exited all of our longs in early 2008, and uh, and that was when we had just started the company. So that really put us on the map. And, uh, and it wasn't just that; it's been ever since then. Uh, all of the major meltdowns we had in 2010, 2015, 2018, 2020. Uh, I, I think we're probably one of the few people that can can actually uh, say they they nailed the tops in in all of those events, uh, uh, either shorting it or at least going to cash to avoid the uh, the problems. And, th and there's a a, a bit of a, a visual representation of that of, of all of, of the major sell signals we've issued to our students uh, going back to 2014. Uh, so you can see they're quite timely, but not just the tops, uh, but the bottoms as well. Uh, not only did we exit the market in the, at the beginning of this year, uh, we started pulling money out and on December 16th of 2019. Uh, we then issued a strong sell signal in January and, uh, and began shorting. And, uh, and of course, then when the market bottomed out, we were able to capitalize on the largest rally we've had since 1938. So this year has been exciting if you've known how to, to see these tops and bottoms uh, from a, a rule-based 
uh, method versus an emotional based method because emotionally and logically um, who would have thought we'd have this rally so uh, you know as Rolly was just saying it's important to take that emotion out of the market and so we need to figure out how we do that best and uh, the three pillars of ACORN as to how we do that best and consistently uh, more importantly uh, is through three key pillars one patterns and probabilities, which is what we're going to start out with today. Uh, so how do we look at the, the core patterns, the core rules that are going on in the charts that uh, allow us to know when to get in, when to get out, uh, when to take profit, when to raise our stops, things like that. Uh, we're also then going to uh, look at how we increase that probability even further by going beyond technicals and uh, talking about how we uh, look at smart money to then give us even further probability. And last but not least, we're then going to talk about how to automate that whole process so that we can uh, set and forget the strategy. And, and this comes back to, to really, you know, what I think trading or investing is meant to be. You know, I, I was drawn to trading or investing when I was very young. I, I started having a passion for the stock market when I was 14. Uh, and, you know, the, I think the, the attraction was not charts and candlesticks. The attraction was uh, the ability to, to have money work for you. You know, I, I grew up reading the Robert Kiyosaki books, Cash Quadrants, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and this idea of, of, of getting in the rat race. And I didn't want to be part of that. I didn't want to be, you know, just rinse and repeating on a nine to five. And so I was always looking for ways to break out of that. And, um, and there's another great quote from, from Warren Buffett who says, uh, you know, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, then you are going to die, uh, work until you die. So breaking free of that mold was uh was what drew me to the stock market uh so in in line with that a good strategy for me at least doesn't need to just be uh rule based and 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 profitable it also needs to be something that provides um a a better lifestyle you know something that gives you your time back instead of taking time away and i think that's one of the big problems with a lot of strategies out there that students come to us with is they say look I just don't have a lot of time or, um, uh, you know, or I prefer to be doing other things with my time. So everything we talk about today is in line with those three pillars of not just how do we make money, but how do we make money in a way that, that gives you more life instead of taking time away. Um, but look, the, the journey there is, 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 uh, hasn't been an easy one. Um, when I started out, uh, when I was 14, I, I paper traded for a while. I, I worked um, in a couple of stock market software companies back in Australia and started, started learning technicals there. And uh, look, when I first started trading, I blew up three accounts. I, I, I lost uh, over 100 grand by the time I was 19 years old. And this was debt that I had borrowed from my credit cards. I'd, I'd maxed out my uh, Commonwealth Bank Australian credit card for 25,000 bucks. I borrowed 20 grand off my dad um, and I'd had success, but I could never hold on to it because I didn't have any rules. So I, I had huge fluctuations of 600% profits where I'd grown an account from 10 to 60 grand over three months and then lost it all in a week uh, because of uh, just emotional based decisions, uh, a lack of rules and all the things that, and problems that go with that. So, you know, this dream that I had originally had of, uh, of, traveling the world and, and uh, trading from anywhere and uh, just a laptop and a cell phone reception uh, early on was a bit more of a disaster. <laughs> so, so for anyone who's been through that process, I understand because I've been there and I've done all of the wrong things first. You know, um, I, I've, I've, I've gone down those roads before and, um, and I guess that's kind of something we should acknowledge at the start of today's presentation is that, you know, there is a lot of noise out there to distract you and take you down the wrong path. And, and that's okay. And I think every trader does go through that. Uh, it goes through that noise, the distractions, the bright, shiny objects, uh, analysis paralysis, you know, um, all of those things that, uh, that can, can take us uh, uh, down the wrong path. Now, this is not that much of a surprise, however. So 
because really the system is not there to help us. The, the system is, is the, the, the cards are stacked against us, in fact. You know, the, the system doesn't want you to be financially independent. They, they want you to leave your money in the, uh, in the banks. They want to charge you the fees. The brokers, they want their, your money to stay with them. The, the mutual funds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They make money from people's ignorance. Um, so the last thing the system wants you to be is uh, independent and profiting because the system feeds off of us. Right. And, and I, I know this is one of my big frustrations when I was learning to trade is, is I was spending good money. I'm, I, I bought uh, software programs that cost over eight grand. I, I, I had every indicator. I had TVs all over my room with, uh, with all of the different news programs on. Like I had it all. And I, I thought considering the amount of money I'd spent trying to learn that I would have been making some money. And, uh, and again, uh, it wasn't until I realized that I was, I was following the retail path and going down a completely wrong direction. Uh, it, it really wasn't until I, I realized this and, uh, and stopped listening to the entertainment and, got, and started realizing the things that really mattered that I, that I uh, uh, was able to, to change the direction from losing money to, uh, uh, to really making money. And, uh, and that was why we started Acorn in 2000, or I started Acorn in 2007, was it was, it was, it was my way of, of, uh, of getting back, I guess, at, at, at the system uh, to, to actually provide a place where investors could get real, good, transparent ideas that they could rely on and uh, uh, instead of getting led down the garden path. And, and, and I've been doing this now since uh, pretty much full time, so to speak, since 2002. Uh, in 2007 was probably one of my better years. Uh, we, uh, by that time, we were by following the same things we're going to talk about today. We were able to build an account up to uh, 5.6 million. Our, our best year there was 142%. That was on stock only, not options. Um, where we put a 3.3 million dollar profit that year, and and I share that with you only because uh, not to gloat, not to say, well, look how great we did that year. It's not that. It's I want you to know that when you're when we're going through this stuff, that it is um, that this is stuff that we do ourselves. Uh, and if you're going to listen to someone and spend your hour here listening to me, uh, you should know that, hey, look, this is stuff that we not only, uh, um, not only works, but stuff that we do with our own money as well. Uh, you know, we practice what we preach. And uh, so, you know, that's, that's us. That's, that's me. That's what we're all about. And, uh, and, that, and that's why we, we teach and share what we do, because I'm a, I'm a huge believer that, uh, that happiness comes from not just succeeding and making money, uh, but also sharing that wealth of knowledge with other people and having an impact outside of your own pocket. So, um, and yeah, look, that's, uh, and that's the photo of where we're at today. That's, that's the result uh, is um, you, when you have that kind of strategy, those kinds of rules, you can, you can literally do it from anywhere. And that's what wealth is. It's not about indicators. It's not necessarily about how many zeros you have behind your bank balance. It's about, do you have the ability to generate enough money every day so that you can go and do what you want with your time? Um, that to me is what wealth is. So, um, and there's my lovely girlfriend. These are the photos we took yesterday. That's wealth to me, right? So how do we get there? How do we build this strategy to, uh, to build this platform that we can make these kinds of trades and decision-making uh, from? Uh, so let's, let's dive into the patterns part. So if you look at you know, and this is kind of the, the decision uh, tree or process I went through early on. Uh, think about the market from a less complex standpoint. Let's just simplify it, right? Kiss, keep it simple. Uh, what makes a stock move? Uh, what makes the market move? Uh, very simply, volume, right? Volume dictates price. So next question, who dictates the volume? Now, if you look at a recent report from JP Morgan that came out last year, uh, they estimate that 70 to 80% of all of the volume in the market, this is a conservative estimate, the higher end estimates uh, discuss levels as high as 95% of the volume each day uh, coming from algorithmic trading or, or computerized trading. So if 90% if let's say of the volume each day comes from algorithms, algorithms that make decisions uh, to buy, where to buy and sell uh, based on patterns, then it just made really obvious sense to me 
that the place where I should spend my time first is figuring out uh, how those patterns work. If 90% of the volume follows those rules, then surely I need to understand those rules as well if I'm going to put the odds in my favor versus fighting the system, right? And, and the beautiful thing about algorithms and the way that the market ticks behind the scenes is that it's the same thing happening again and again and again and again and again in very much the same way. And it's been happening for decades. Um, and when something happens millions of times over the same way, you can reverse engineer that. So we're not trying to compete with the uh, the algorithms. What we're trying to do, or what we are doing, is is uh, figuring out what the fingerprint was. Right? What were the common characteristics in all of these thousand trades that looked the same uh, that were going on before it skyrocketed? What were the symptoms of that of that stock? And what was common in all of those situations over those thousands of trades? Um, that showed that same fingerprint right before the uh, the move happened. And from there, we, we now start to know what we should be looking for. And from there, we can start scanning for that to, to look for every single time that specific um, types of pattern starts to occur again. And that's where we get our trades from. So, um, so what kind of patterns are there? Well, uh, most people have been uh, educated on the idea of uh, uh, momentum, right? Uh, you know, buy when the stock crosses its moving averages and things like that. But we need to go deeper than that. that that's really just the tip of the iceberg. And, 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 and if you've ever seen the movie Titanic, we know uh, prop, what problems can occur when all you're aware of is the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> uh, so the first kind of key takeaway from today is, is I want you to kind of picture this statement you can even this is actually a, a, something i put up on my wall for quite a while to remind myself that every time i look to the chart uh when i'm looking at the movement that's going on in the chart that something only changes direction if it hits something so when a stock changes direction or a cryptocurrency or an index it's changing direction not because it's a chaotic market, not because it's unpredictable, uh, but because it's actually hit something. A horizontal support or resistance, a trend line resistance, or a moving average. And so, uh, depending on what type of support and resistance is, is actually going on, uh, this is going to tell us what type of cycle uh, that this stock or, or, or equity is in or, or index is in. So there's three types of cycles, which, which really come down to two core groups. And that is oscillation and momentum. So uh, just a quick show of hands, uh, how many people here uh, are, are very familiar with, um, with, the, with the, the key differences between oscillation and momentum, if you just want to say yes. And if you're not so much, uh, just give me a no. Okay, excellent. So quite a few people saying no. A few yeses. <laughs> I see a few Acorn students in the room as well. Wonderful. Let's talk about this. For everyone that said no, or who, uh, uh, for everyone that's on the fence, it's really important to understand these differences. I can't explain how valuable this is. And, and in fact, I didn't really understand the, the value of this to an audience until I started interviewing uh, our lifetime students when I was in, when I was, as Jeanette said earlier, I was, when I was on lockdown in Australia, uh, uh, I thought, well, look, this is a perfect time uh, with, with the free time that we have to, to reach out to all of our customers. So um, I sent an email to all of our customers who'd been with us for five years, six years, 10 years. And I said, hey, you guys, you've been with us for a really long time. You know us really well. You're a lifetime member with us. Um, you mind doing an interview with me to tell me all of the things over the years that have really mattered to you about our service, what we teach, the aha moments, why you joined us, why you stayed, because we want to really keep hitting those home runs for, for new customers and make sure we're aware of what those valuable points are. And what blew me away is I thought all the students were going to say, Johnny, it's your, it's your great stock alerts. Johnny, it, it's, it, it's the smart money indicators that you give us. But in fact, some of the biggest common aha moments was people uh, talking about 
the, the breakthrough they had when they realized the difference between oscillation and momentum. And that's why we're talking about this today. So oscillation and momentum are two uh, very different types of patterns. And what it comes down to is what is the system that is in control that makes the stock go up and or down? If we are in an oscillating system, then, uh, then the system in control, I'm just going to grab my uh, pen here. Uh, the system that is in control is an oscillating one. And uh, just grab my, my line here. Okay, great. Um, so if we've got, you know, basic example, think about a double top or a double bottom where a stock is uh, bouncing back and forth like this, right? If you have a system like this, uh, it is an oscillating system, meaning that the support and resistance or the system that makes this go up and down is an oscillating one. These are straight lines, uh, which is where the key reversal points happen. So in an oscillating system, we do not use moving averages. Right. Um, for those of you that use moving averages and uh, and MACD uh, and stochastics and on balance volume and things like that, um, they're all great indicators, but they don't work if you are in an oscillating system. Because think about it: if something goes from nine to ten, nine to ten, nine to ten, where's the moving average going to be? It's going to be going straight through the middle. So if you're buying when the stock crosses its moving average system and you're selling when it breaks back below the moving average system or breaks back below the previous candles or what have you, uh, you're going to constantly be getting stopped out. Uh, how, how many people in the room right now ha, are following a moving average system and, uh, and, have, and, have, and have felt that frustration of having lots and lots of stop outs only to see it go straight back up afterwards? Yeah. Chances are you're probably trying to use a momentum strategy on an oscillating stock. And because the market is split pretty evenly between these two cycles, chances are when it, there's a 50% chance whenever you look at any given equity or, or index that it is oscillating. So if you're only trading momentum and only understand momentum, you're going to be potentially using the wrong strategy 50% of the time. And, and that's something that's going to obviously make a big dent in your potential to profit and make uh, proper decisions. So that's the first thing. If we are oscillating, the support and resistance that matters are the straight lines. So our job is to figure out where those straight lines are. And then that's going to give us a shape. And from that shape, we then have the rules on how to trade it. So if we are oscillating and we are seeing a double bottom, then the rule on how to trade that is to buy when we hit support. So in an oscillating scenario with a double bottom, we're buying as we are dropping, right? We are, we are, we are catching the falling knife because we are buying when the stock hits that key support that matters. So we're buying as close to that level as possible, which means buying on the way down. And once we're in, we're then setting a stop loss very tight underneath that entry point. The average stop loss for an oscillating trade for us is usually about 1.3%. 1, 1 so the risk is very small because we know almost instantly that the trade has failed if it breaks below that very specific level. So very small risk from a stop loss standpoint, buying on the way down and, and also selling on the way up. So if you are someone who's always wondered, when should I get in versus hold? Well, in a, if you're dealing with an oscillating pattern, the probability is telling you that in that kind of a system, it's more likely to reverse straight back down to your entry point than break higher. And that is the probability we need to understand, right? Las Vegas, uh, except for at the moment, but Las Vegas typically makes billions of dollars a year for that one simple fact that they're able to put probability 
in their favor. They know that if they spin the wheel of, of a million times, they're gonna win 51 times out of 100, and that's all they need to, to make substantial amounts of money. The previous speaker mentioned that idea of how to make money, um, even if you're getting it wrong half the time type of thing, right? It's about putting probability in your favor. Um, so that's the first thing. We need to understand the entry rules, the exit rules are all different in an oscillating scenario. And the indicators we use are also different. Again, again we don't use MACD. We don't use moving averages. We, we're not looking for relative strength index to go up over 30 or up over 50. All of that goes out the door. In fact, you can take it off your screen because it doesn't work in oscillation. However, now let's turn our sights to the other category, which is momentum. If we are in a momentum system, now the moving averages are what is in control. Uh, this is the power, this is the system of power that dictates this stock's movement. This is the algorithm behind the chart, right? This is where the 90% of algorithms are now saying, right, now we're not looking at those straight lines. Now the moving averages is the, is the system of control. And stocks are going to cycle between all these different patterns uh, over the course of uh, a given time frame. So if we have a momentum system, uh, we're not concerned when we rally into a horizontal level because the horizontal level isn't the most powerful support and resistance. Momentum is going to trump oscillation, so to speak. Uh, so when we rally into those horizontal levels or when we rally into those trend lines where you might be looking at your stock and saying, gee, I'm not sure if I should stay in this, we're, we're running into resistance. By understanding the power of the momentum behind the trade, this gives you the, um, the toolbox, the, the ability to, to make the decision to stay in because you know that the probability is on your side that the stock's actually going to go substantially higher and keep breaking through those, uh, those resistance levels. And this is, this is probably another frustration that people have had where they've been in a momentum trade, sold it too early, only to see the stock a month later up 100, 200%. And, and then you kind of slap yourself and say, ah, oh, I've, I've, I've left so much meat on the table, so much meat on the bone. How do I avoid getting out too early? And, and that comes also back to the principles of patterns and, and, and starting with understanding this core difference between the two cycles. Uh, does that make sense, everyone? Have I explained that clearly enough? Excellent. Okay. So the takeaway here is, is, is to keep in mind how the market really works. Right, and, and that's what we're doing here is we, we're, we're peeling back the onion layers to find the truth, to find information that we can, we can reliably make decisions on, data that we can trust, data that gives us insight instead of emotions. And so when we're looking at a chart, remember that statement, it's, that something doesn't change direction randomly, it has hit something. Our job is to, is to, to figure out what because algorithms don't see a chart like we do. Algorithms see levels, all right? So um, as, we, as, we, um, as we move on from there, the, the key part then, or the, the next key part to this equation or this, this building of the strategy is, is to uh, know how to identify the strong levels, all right? So um, let's just have a look here. All right, so when you're looking at an oscillating chart, we, we talked about the, the differences in the cycles. Now let's talk about uh, um, how we identify a, a good oscillating trade. So firstly, when you are identifying an oscillating trade, one of the, uh, one of the key things you can look at, uh, let's take a look at, um, let me think. Let's look at ENPH. Okay, so ENPH is a stock we're currently uh, uh, watching for a for a short setup. All right. Um, if we take a look at this chart, what we can see is is if we just take these lines that I've drawn earlier off for a moment. If we look at this chart and we're trying to determine if it's oscillating or momentum, one really easy test here is let's put the moving averages on. There's a nine day and 20 day moving average. 
Now, what we can see is that the stock, it, it, it follows it kind of, but there are so many examples where it cuts up and down through it like it doesn't exist, right? The, the, the key turning points here are not the moving averages. The key turning points here are actually the oscillation. Okay, so when you look at a stock and you see that um, you're looking for which system really accounts for the movement, these two lines account for every major reversal. So here's one example of a, of a bearish setup that's building. We're not short this yet. It's still a watch, but you can see that the t what shape do the lines make? It makes a shape of a wedge that's getting smaller and smaller. This is called a rising wedge. And there are very specific rules of how we trade that. And it is a bearish pattern. Um, if we look at AM, this is a, this is a, uh, a live alert. This is one, something we alerted last week. Uh, if we look at AM, which is um, uh, oil and gas sector, uh, you can see, again, if we look, if we put on the, the nine day moving average, do a quick test. What you can see here is, does the stock work with the moving average? No. It doesn't work at all with the moving average. The moving average is just cutting through the middle of the chart, right? Because it is not a momentum stock. This is not something we would want to be long. In fact, it's something that we recommended again as a short last week. So if we take a look at what system is controlling this stock, you can see once more, that we are in a, 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 excuse me, an upward channel, okay? So moving averages don't work. We cut those out. We can actually take them off the chart because they're useless in an oscillating scenario. We figure out what lines are in control and we, and we can draw those on. We can see there that this dictates all of the major re reversals in this, in, this, in this system, in this chart. Then we can ask ourselves, well, what is the shape? Well, the shape is an upward channel. And now we have the shape. Now we know the rules because there are black and white rules as to how we trade that. An upward channel is bearish. So on the third touch of resistance, this is where we can start shorting. Or when it breaks through this trend line, we can also short there as well. We have opportunities to short at, um, at both of these locations up here or if it breaks down below this area here, both ideal shorting opportunities because an upward channel is a bearish pattern, not bullish as some people have been taught or, 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 uh, mis or, or, or have perceived it as. And we'll talk a bit more about why that's the case in the moment. All right, so this making sense so far. We, the, you can see the differences here between oscillation and momentum. And there's a lovely trade as the market's making record highs, right? There's a, there's a beautiful trade from 750 already down uh, close to 20%. So let's move back over to the, uh, to the slides. So when we're looking at the oscillation, uh, now we, we should understand uh, how, to, uh, how to identify it. The next thing then is to look at where are the really high probability um, uh, trading opportunities. So when you're looking at an oscillating chart, what you want to see is the presence of this um, uh, very powerful algorithm, right? Again, let's keep it simple. Think about what we're really trying to predict here. What, what's the fingerprint that we're looking for? Um, we're looking for evidence that 90% of the volume has gone, right? From, from, from sell to buy, or from buy to sell. We're looking for the incredible power that there is a big algorithm sitting there ready to act. Let me use an analogy to explain this. So let's say that you have a 100 ton truck going down a highway at 100 miles an hour. And, and somehow you were able to take that 100 ton truck reverse it around and send it straight back in the opposite direction at the exact same speed instantly, right? That's not humanly possible, right? That can't happen in the physics of today's world anyway. You'd have to have superhuman strength, right? Superhuman abilities. That's what we're looking for 
in an oscillating trade. What we're looking for is a stock that might be, you know, uh, trading $50 million a day or $100 million a day, dropping 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%. And then after dropping on hundreds of millions of dollars a day, it hits a level and goes instantly back up, right? Straight back up like that. That tells us that we have a very powerful algorithm sitting there, right? Because people don't change their mind like that. That is a, that is a algorithmic response. That's, that's from 90% of the volume going from sell to buy because this price has been hit and it was waiting for it. So what we're looking for is a very sharp rally back up. We are not looking for a rounded bottom. Right. So if you've if you've ever traded double bottoms or double tops, if you have a, a a rounded top, that is not a good trade. Right. As you approach that second top, that's what we call an Eve and Eve top. You don't trade those. You don't trade an Eve and Adam bottom. Right. Those aren't good either. The only kinds of double bottoms or double tops or oscillating trades in general that we want is we want to see where there's a very sharp and powerful move that happens instantly. Okay, and you can see that example if we take a look at the S and P 500 uh, that has that, that's uh, current, just recently moved. Uh, let's just take a look here if I get my mouse back. Uh, let's take a look at the S and P. Now, how did the S&P break down back in, back in February? If you look at this top here, notice how it rallies up and it rolls over. It doesn't rally up and go straight down. It rallies up uh, gradually and then rolls over. That's an Eve top, meaning it's not a strong level of resistance. So for people that were looking at this, uh, uh, this level here of 3,400, as we were rallying up to it recently, thinking that, oh no, we're, we're, we're about to hit the same levels we broke down from, uh, it was actually quite the opposite. And at Acorn, what we were saying was, we're actually going to break through because A, it's not a strong oscillating level, and B, the market is in momentum. Okay, and if you take a look at the at the moving averages, you can see that on the S&P 500. We were oscillating up until this point, but ever since then, the moving averages have been working beautifully well. And so while that moving average system continues to be in effect, the market is going to continue to go higher. And, and on top of that, we were not at a strong oscillating level that was even a threat to that move anyway, right? Again, these are simple things that allow us to make very important decisions confidently because the rules are telling us what probability is telling us to do. Everyone with me? All right. So this is a very important uh, difference between uh, oscillation and momentum and, and how we approach our charts. And of course, uh, again, as we've just looked at in terms of the S&P, this is completely different when we have a momentum system, which is where we are, are dealing with something that we are looking for that more gradual move. The, the building of, of institutional buying and smart money accumulation, the, the nice long bottom before it shoots up, right? That's where we're dealing with a different type of pattern, a different type of algorithm where there's momentum, where this thing isn't just a short move, but something we might end up holding for a month, two months, three months or longer, because this is something that could go from a dollar to $2 to, to 10, or from 10 to 50, or from or, or you know 20 to 200, or whatever the case might be. Um, so the takeaway here so far is that pat, all patterns have different probabilities. So it's important to understand, it's critical to understand the differences between oscillation and momentum. And from there, we can then, under, we can then understand what pattern is presenting itself to us and whether it's one of the top five patterns we really want to trade, right? So we don't want to trade hundreds of different setups. We want to, we want to look for the highest probability patterns and only trade those and know what we're looking for. The next step then in the process is is as I mentioned, how to combine that then with a higher probability um, 
uh, confirmation by looking at, at the insiders uh, and, and looking at smart money. Because what we've talked about so far accounts for the volume behind the market from a, from a short term or technical standpoint. But in a market like this, what we want to be able to do is look a little bit deeper to see um, uh, to see where the smart money is then going behind the scenes. Okay. Now, um, the and, and the reason for this is that we are re we we are still in a dangerous market. Uh, in fact, one of the things that I, I I wanted to point out to you is that if you take a look at um, uh, at the fact that the market is breaking these record level highs and things like that. Uh, all stocks are not participating in that. Okay. So in, if you look back to say, for example, the 2018 crash, uh, this is a, this is a potentially very similar situation to where we find ourselves today. Uh, if you look at the 2018 crash, we had rallied up to um, to this level back in uh, in February, and then we crashed straight down, right? Uh, so that happened in uh, in early February 2018. We then rallied all the way back up from that very significant, very abrupt straight down drop. We rallied all the way back up to that level. We tested that resistance. We broke through it, much like we are right now. We broke through, making higher highs, and people got sucked in. To, to thinking that was a breakout, when in fact, they were looking again at the wrong pattern because it wasn't a double top again. It was, it was, a, um, it was again a, a, an upward channel. And we actually came up and hit that resistance perfectly and broke down again in October. So one, there's similarities in how we're breaking out here and possibly forming that another little last bit of the bubble. But the second thing I wanna point out is, is, is how in both of these drops, what, what happened behind the scenes to individual stocks before the market collapsed. So if you take a look uh, at, uh, at this indicator I'm gonna show you, it's, it's, it's really, really fascinating because it, it again peels the onion layers back to see the truth behind the story. And so the story was S&P 500 making record highs, S&P 500 doing really, really well. But, um, but let me point out a, this indicator. So this is an indicator we look at a lot. Uh, in fact, every week we check this indicator as part of our rules to decide whether we want to be long or short or, or maybe a mixture of both and how much, right? Do I want to be 100% long or am I 90% long and 10% short or am I 80% long and 20% short? Am I going completely to cash? You know, we have a checklist and a rule system that tells us those answers based on uh, strategy instead of gut feelings. One part of that strategy, one of those indicators we use to make that decision is this. And this indicator looks at all of the stocks in the market, instead of the S&P, the, the manipulated S&P 500, it looks at the actual market, right? All of the stocks in the market uh, that exist. And, and what percentage of those are above their 50 day moving average, which is a very important smart money support level. This is where institutions buy, hedge funds buy, uh, long-term investors buy. Uh, it's, a, it's an important smart money support level. And, and what you'll notice is that as we led up to, uh, as the S&P broke record highs in October of, of 2018 and broke through that very, very seemingly strong resistance and went higher, people thought the market was getting better. But in fact, behind the scenes, a totally different thing was occurring. Um, what you can see here is on the right hand side, these numbers represent the percentage of stocks in the entire market that are above their 50 day key level support. And what you'll see here is that in June, 70% of stocks were above their support. As the market went higher, and higher and higher, individual stocks went the opposite way. In fact, by October, when the market started its, its crash, individual stocks had already dropped from 70% being above their support to 30% being above their support. 
In other words, 70% of stocks were already in bearish trends before the S&P 500 even started to go down. This is why we need to be able to look through the garbage, look through the BS and see what's really going on. Uh, the quest for the truth, right? And, and this is, um, uh, again, what happened in 2020. Uh, we actually, um, in January, we, we went about the 70% number is something we actually look at a lot. Uh, whenever we get to 70% or above, this is a very important warning sign. And we got it in December. Right, I mentioned December 16th was when we issued our first warning signal to start uh, going to cash or getting short. Um, and then in January, we, we went above the sell signal again, right? A, a second confirmation. And so uh, by February, you can already see that individual stocks before the coronavirus crash, individual stocks had already dropped from 75% being above their support levels uh, down to, uh, what was it? 40%. The smart money was selling well ahead of retail traders. And, uh, and that is where we are, uh, where we have been recently. Uh, if you take a look at uh, where we're currently at on this indicator, the S&P 500 may be storming ahead, but uh, you'll actually see that individual stocks will tell a different story. Uh, we have gone from 95% of stocks being above their support in June to 63% today. In fact, we reached a recent low of 45%, much like the way we crashed uh, earlier this year. So this is a divergence that tells you what the market's really doing. The S&P might be going up, but, uh, but we've got 47%, sorry, 37% of stocks that have crossed bearishly in, our, our, in, in, a, in a bearish trend. So key takeaway here, it is not a stock market, it's a market of individual stocks. So we need to be able to, um, to, do, to do a few things here. We need to understand the power of patterns. We need to have a, a rule-based method to understand what direction we should be looking in for, for trades um, uh, and, 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 and look at strategy-based decisions instead of emotional-based decisions, right? The next piece to that puzzle is in, is in our, our, our Acorn S&P 500 indicator. Uh, this is, a, this is a, something that helps us with the timing. So uh, this is actually an algorithm that we developed about six years ago. And it, it's, it's the most powerful thing that I know as a standalone system. Uh, it works only on the S&P 500 and we get roughly two signals a month. Uh, and uh, going back to 1960, which is seven, uh, sorry, 60 years, this has had over 1,400 signals. And uh, the, uh, the, the success rate of that is just shy of 93%. If you know of anything that's 93% accurate on, the, on calling the direction of the S&P 500 twice a month, let me know. But I haven't found it yet. This is something we developed seven years ago and, and has, was a game changer for our trading and, of course, what we teach our students and how we pick our alerts. So um, uh, it's very rarely wrong. And, and it just gave us another bullish signal today. So um, we are looking to be, uh, this, this signal means that we should be staying above this level of, of 350 on the SPY for the next three weeks. So we've got some more bullish action for at least the next three weeks. And this is another part of that rule system that I talked to you about that focuses on the data instead of opinions. Um, so as we start to to put this together, you can see there's a recipe here, right? There's a, there's a process that tells us um, uh, how should we, what, what should we see the markets doing? Well, the takeaway here is that, we, that the market is continuing to go up and should continue to go up for the next three weeks. Um, however, what we can see is that individual stocks are starting to drop. The really weak companies uh, are starting to top out and decline. So what's the takeaway here? Well, it means that if we're going to go long, uh, as, as more stocks will go up than down, so the longs we, we, we want to be looking for would make up the majority of our positions, but they need to be really good. They need to be uh, high, high probability patterns where everything going on is perfect, 
right? Which means we need to know what we're looking for to define perfect. But, but that's the takeaway. We need to make sure that if we're gonna go long, it's a really damn good long. What it also means is that now is the time to start looking for the really juicy shorts that the companies that are the, the, the rotten apples, right? The rotten apples that are the first ones to drop from the tree. And as a market starts to build into a bubble, the rotten apples are the ones that drop first. And those are the ones you want to be in from the very beginning. That's where you can make a killing on buying puts or shorting the stock. Um, and you want to get those when they start to drop. You don't want to be chasing it halfway down the chart when the, when the rest of the market starts to turn. So what we're going to do is we're then going to talk about a few of these trades so that you can see now some examples of things that we're in right now or recent trades we've been in. So then you can bring this full circle from patterns and probabilities to market structure to now uh, setting and forgetting these trades with this smart money uh, process. And uh, yeah, again, these are just some, some snaps that my girlfriend took me on. Our, she, she started a blog called Johnny and His Laptop. And uh, so anyway, but uh, look, that, that, but that's, that's the point. All of these trades that I'm about to show you, uh, as, as, as exciting as they look, are not the labor of hours and hours and hours of work. They are the labor of having an efficient strategy where we're scanning for the trade, identifying the pattern, and then setting the entry and exit and letting it go. So. Uh, let's take some, let's look at some examples of that. So VBIV um, is an excellent example of, of, a, of a long there that uh, we're out of now. But um, uh, firstly, take a look at the insiders. And um, this is the last piece to the puzzle. Uh, if we take a look at the insiders, this is where we are going to be able to tap in to some incredibly valuable truth. Right. If I'm considering going long a stock because, hey, it's a perfect pattern. It looks fantastic. There's lots of momentum there. Uh, all of the indicators I look at are, are, are thumbs up. But I'm concerned about the market conditions. So I think, you know, how do I increase the probability of this trade to really put uh, something special behind uh, behind my sales? And um, uh, I'm thinking about the sails of a, of, a, of, a, of a boat, right? How do you put the wind in your sails? So going beyond the technicals, we start to consider what the company is doing. You know, it, does this company have something so special going on that even if the market started to become toppy, even if the market started to drop, is this company so good that it can actually fight a bearish trend and, and hold its value or even profit in a, in a downturning market. So we need to go beyond technicals for that answer. And I'm not a fundamentalist. I have no interest in being a fundamentalist. I'm, I don't wanna go to school for the next 30 years to become a, 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 an expert biopharmacist. I, I don't, I don't wanna go spend the next 30 years in a mine to be, to be an expert geologist. And, and even if I did, I'm still not going to be um, uh, better equipped to fundamentally analyze uh, a stock than, than, the, than the, the flaws of people at Goldman Sachs, right? Um, and, and even the people at Goldman Sachs aren't as, uh, aren't, couldn't have the same level of insight as the insiders. Right? At the end of the day, if, you, if you're trying to look at a company fundamentally, I don't care whether you're JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, or Warren Buffett himself, they're all making educated guesses. But there is only one group of people that actually know the answer, and that's the insiders. So you can do all the research you want in the world, but, but why not go direct to the answer? And to me, that answer is, what are the insiders doing with their own money? So when I look at VBIV and I see that the 10% uh, owner, Perspective Advisors, is uh, increasing their position by t with $10 million of their own money, but not just buying with $10 million, no, they're actually loading $10 million of money and increasing their position by 77% in that one transaction. This is on top of uh, a previous buying of 20 million back here um, and, uh, and 650,000 over here. And while they do this, the chief medical, sorry, excuse me, <laughs> getting excited. Uh, the chief medical officer is buying. Uh, the chief financial officer is buying. Uh, 
the chief business officer is buying, the CEO and president are buying, and there is only one reason people buy with their own money, and that's because they expect to make more. They expect to make a lot. And if you take a look then at the chart, uh, you'll see why they were, right? VBIV, so they were loading up uh, back here over in you know, July, August, September as the stock based around 60 cents, 70 cents. And, um, and then this is where we alerted it. Um, where was it? Right here. Uh, sorry. This was the first alert here on the left. Second alert here on the right. Um, and again, let's, let's think about the pattern. What kind of pattern do we have? What kind of system are we in? Well, take a look at how the stock is dropping, right? It's staying under those moving averages, that those moving averages are holding it down beautifully well, which is basically like kind of like a pressure cooker, right? It's holding it down, holding it down, holding it down. And the whole time it does, the stock is building power, building power, building power. And then all of a sudden that pressure breaks and like a pressure cooker, it blows up. That's why they stopped selling them, right? <laughs> um, the pressure cooker explodes. And, and this is where you get explosive moves. So there's the pattern, the explosive move of that momentum that began right here at 60 cents. But not just that, we also had uh, m tens of millions of dollars of buying from every single person that mattered in the company. The only people that knew. So analysts aside, to me, there's the best possible fundamental research you could do. And when you align that with the probability of the pattern to know that the 90% of volume is going in your favor as well, what more could you possibly ask for, right? And, and so that was a trade we bought $5 calls on, uh, October or November calls. And, um, and uh, we're out of it now. It, uh, it stopped out when we pulled back below $5.40. But that was a fantastic run. Even if you were in the stock, from 63 cents where we alerted it at, uh, even up to 540, you know, you're dealing with close to a thousand percent gain on the stock alone, let alone the options. And, uh, and this is not something you have to micromanage. It's not a trade you have to babysit. It's something we looked at once a week and just adjusted the stop loss as it moved. So um, there's an example of, of a smart money trade on VBIV. Um, uh, take a look at uh, MYOV. We got I got a lot here, but we're going to run out of time. Uh, MYOV, again, 160 million dollars worth of buying from eight different 10% owners. Do the math. If each of those eight people own a minimum of 10%, that means as a group, they own 80% of the company at least. And that, and those eight people decided not just to buy some more, but to buy $20 million more each, right? When they already owned 80% of the company. Tell me that's not a sign of some high expectations for the company. And they, and they bought this around $8.25 to $8.96, $9.10. Um, that this stock wasn't being talked about by the analyst. You wouldn't have, you, I, I definitely don't think you saw it on TV. But despite that, behind the scenes, big money was moving hands. And uh, if you take a look at the chart, let's look at the pattern, right? We had a downward channel. A downward channel is bullish. So as soon as we broke out of that channel, uh, here on the, uh, um, it was actually on Friday, November 15th, was where we alerted that entry as it just started to break through that channel resistance. Uh, perfect entry point. We didn't expect it to rally so quickly, but it did. Uh, two days later, it, it shot up from our entry around 6.20 to, uh, to a high of $17 and continued up to 19 before then stopping out. Uh, but that was a terrific move, even if you're just in the stock. And the catalyst there was that they, um, they had the first ever uh, treatment for Lyme disease of, of its type that got FDA approved. Um, stock shot up, we took our profits. It was a fantastic two week profit. Um, coronavirus and everything hit, stock sh shot back down again in a downward channel. And again, the insiders loaded up at the same prices. They loaded up at 650, 725 again, <laughs> without selling any at the top. And the stock once again broke out of its downward channel. And once again, we alerted options on it as well as the stock. And, uh, and the thing 
again, <laughs> rose to 2150. I mean, rinse and repeat. This stuff is, this is what trading is all about. And, and you can, you can, and, and you can automate it. You know, if you had to watch this all day long, even if you made a thousand percent, to me, that's work, right? Even if you're making good money, it's still good money in exchange for your time. And to me, uh, that's just, that doesn't hold my interest like this does, because this is something that not only can you make great money, but you can, you can automate it in a way that you can be out enjoying uh, the money you're making. Like, I mean, as I said earlier, we're, 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 we've got, we've rented an RV for 21 days. We're driving across Canada through the Rocky mountains. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and you know what the cost of that is $170 a day, right? $170 a day to, to, to be in the, in the beauty of nature, camping by lakes and glaciers and, and uh, having reindeer walk through your camp like we did last night and elk got walking by the road. To me, for 170 bucks a day, let's say 200 including extra expenses, can you ask yourself the question, can you make $200 a day in your trading? To, to me, $200 a day can provide an incredible lifestyle if, if you are able to consistently replicate that process right? When it becomes something that you can rely on, a strategy rather than a gamble. And, and, it, and, uh, and it works just as well to the downside. Uh, AM, that stock I showed you earlier as an example of a short, take a look at that. There you go. AM, upward channel, perfect pattern, breaking down from that 750 area where we uh, alerted it last week in our trading room and, um, and take a look at the insiders right? It's not just a great short because of the pattern. It was a great short because when you look at the insiders, they were selling $41 million worth, 48%. CEO sells $73 million worth, which is a 62% sell. The CEO is selling more than half of his own shares. Why would anyone buy that? <laughs> if you knew the CEO was selling all of their shares, would you buy the stock? But, but hundreds of millions of dollars worth of people are because they're either not aware of the pattern or they're not aware of the insiders or they're ignoring it, right? Uh, look at that, 100% sale from the director for 149 million, 100% sale for 299 million from Warburg Pincus, the a director and 10% owner. That is a mass exodus. And these are the kinds of shorts where you can make a lot of money when the market rolls over as, it, it, as some stocks are already starting to do. So um, this, is, this is what we're all about, guys. Um, that's what Acorn is, is all about. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit for time. Um, you know, what we provide is this way to, to, to systematically approach the market with rules, rules that you can automate. Um, rules that allow for consistent uh, decision making that you have confidence in and, and understand, right? Uh, but but deeper than that, what we really provide is no BS strategies that allow you to to make trading fun again, make trading profitable uh, in a way that gives back uh, and focusing on the the, the core things to uh, and core concepts rather than all of the bright shiny objects. Um, and that is the pathway forward. It was the game changer for me, and it's the and, and it's what we teach all of our students. Uh, and, and as I said, um, it's it's something that you can literally do from anywhere. You know, whether you're uh, whether you're in a um, a cabin in the woods like we we spent our uh, Christmas in Canada. You know, as long as you have a cell phone signal, as long as you have a, a laptop with you, you can do it from anywhere. And uh, whether that's your backyard, no matter what. So. You can, um, uh, you can sign up with this uh, for an amazing package that we put together for the purpose of, uh, of today's presentation. Um, it's only $397 for the complete package. And that starts with three months of alerts. These alerts are the same stocks that we're looking to buy and sell with our own money. Uh, so the, as I said earlier, we practice what we preach. So when we're sending you an alert, it's, uh, it's something we're looking to put our own money into. So we'll talk about our, typically our five favorite trades for the week. That might be five longs, four longs and one short, three longs and two shorts, depending on what the market's doing and where those opportunities are. Entry level, exit level, 
stop loss, we'll have multiple targets. So we'll have a target one where we sell a third, a target two where we'll sell the, sec the second third, and maybe a target three where we sell the rest. All of this is pre-programmed and set out sometimes days before the trade even triggers. Uh, options, if we're trading calls or puts, you'll get those alerts as well. Uh, you'll have uh, three months of live classes every Tuesday and Thursday, where we'll be breaking down the market from start to finish with all of the indicators we use, uh, uh, going through the, the patterns, so that while you're learning the, the, the theory of the course, you're gonna be seeing it practiced in live conditions every, every few days. Uh, those are recorded, sent out, and posted on our website in the members portal. Uh, you'll have lifetime access to our smart money indicators. So I talked about our S&P 500 indicator that's been right about 93%, just under 93% of the time for the last 60 years. That indicator is included for life. Uh, the value of that is at least 397 right there. Um, the, uh, there's two other ones we use as well, which I won't go into today, but that whole package, which is the complete package of indicators we use is all included for life. And last but not least, uh, you're then going to have access to the, uh, to the smart money scans themselves. So you'll have the indicators, the alerts, and you'll then be given the scans and lifetime access to them also that actually find these trades. So at the click of a button, every week or every day if you want, you can run the smart money long scan and instantly get a list of all of the trades that have the highest level of insider buying or selling and those perfect patterns that are ready to go right now. Uh, and that is going to save you an, an, an enormous amount of time so that you can start focusing on quality uh, instead of quantity in the, in the trades. So those scans are included for life as well. Um, now, um, my dear friend Jeanette has asked me to finish up by uh, quarter past. So uh, we'll have about five minutes for questions, I believe. Um, but uh, if we can post the, uh, so what, ch uh, what charting platforms are supported? Um, the, the platforms that are supported is, uh, one second here. I think I paused my screen accidentally. That means, hey, yeah. You're good there. We see wealth charts, Ninja Trader. Oh, good. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, wealth charts. Thank you, Rolly. Um, wealth charts, Ninja Trader, TradeStation, MetaStock, Incredible Charts, Think or Swim, Trading View, TC2000. Um, if your program isn't listed there, uh, we can provide you with the the coding for the indicator to to load it in. If you don't have one of those programs, uh, we can also provide uh, a, a software for you that uh, uh, is free that you can do everything on. So uh, the the answer basically is regardless of what software you're using, this will work for anybody. You don't need a specific piece of software to make this work. We've coded the indicator into pretty much every program and the scanning itself is done on a third party software, which, uh, which we program our coding and algorithm into and that software is free. So you will not have to pay any monthly fees. You'll have it for life. We give you the code, it's yours, you own it uh, and off you go. Okay, do we provide recommendations on the S&P? Uh, we are looking at the S&P all the time. Uh, the, the Russell 2000, the S&P, the NASDAQ. Uh, I talked about this on, uh, I was uh, uh, on the uh, uh, Pure Exposure Program, which is a, uh, a kind of a, a show last night. We were talking about the, uh, the Russell 2000, um, IWM, for those of you that were watching, uh, I mean, look, we, we, we look at all of the indexes. We look at, uh, we look at all of the, the key moving parts of the market. Uh, as you can see, uh, this was my comment on the Russell 2000 uh, last week. And again, yesterday, uh, that the Russell was breaking out of its, uh, Sorry, one second here. You can see the Russell 2000 breaking out of a downward channel, which is bullish, and, and why that was a leading indicator that the S&P was likely to, to rally this week. Um, so yes, we talk about the indexes, ETFs, uh, the, the S&P, all of it. Okay. Um, uh, Robin says, John, I have been in your program for several months and I'm sure most weeks I have had two or three videos, not just one. Uh, yes. Well, look, uh, I prefer to under promise and over deliver. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah. One, one video a week is what we promise, but when the markets get exciting, when I have a lot to share, when we want to give you lots of updates on the trades we're in, sometimes we will send out two or three videos in a week. Uh, that's one thing you can, you can guarantee yourself. You're going you're, you're gonna to get a lot more than, than what we've displayed on the screen here today. So uh, again, it's a terrific package, uh, acornwealthcorp.com forward slash win. And uh, again, it's 397 for everything. And, uh, and that, that's going to be a, it's going to be a game changer for you as it has for me and all the other students uh, going into these very exciting markets ahead. There was a question there about um, what if somebody would like to pay now, but can't start for a little while. Is that a possibility, John, somebody coming into your subscription service, but let's say they're not in a position to take advantage of it immediately. Can they defer or delay when they start the package? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, because of course you're going to get the, you will receive the on-demand material with, there's three modules in the smart money course, Good which point. covers yep. pat patterns, um, uh, stop loss management, uh, the, how to scan for the setups, longs, shorts, the insiders, the tools we use. So you're going to have the on-demand smart money course, which is about six hours long, which you can go through in your own time. And then when you're ready to, 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 to go live and start following our live classes and our live recommendations, just drop us an email and say, turn me on, so to speak. And, um, and, uh, and then we can uh, activate uh, the other components to it. So uh, whether that's a month from now, three months from now, uh, certainly we can accommodate that. All right. Well, that's great. Well, Johnny, what a great presentation, seriously. Loved having you with us, a great way to end things up. We've had a wonderful day and to finish with you in your RV, traveling <laughs> around the United States, finding, you know, internet that you could, <laughs> that you could get into, sharing your charts. And I think really, uh, once again, for me as a, as a trader, I just really respect the emphasis that you have on simplicity, rules base, get rid of the emotion. And I just love the, <laughs> I just love your point that look, if the patterns are in your favor and the technicals are your favor and you look at the inside trader, I mean, what more could you want? And it makes you feel as a trader somehow less than whole when you listen to the way you talk about how the smart money moves the market. And it would be silly for us not to pay attention to that. But it just, you know, as many retail traders, we don't even think about that. We know it happens, it's back there on the side, but you've shown how people can go ahead and use that as part of their fundamental analysis. And I thought that was really cool. <laughs> you know, sometimes Rolly, the answer is hiding in plain sight. And, uh, and so, yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yo, you're welcome, buddy. It's great to see you again. You too. <laughs> Thanks, Johnny. Thanks, Johnny. Oh, you're welcome, buddy. It's so great to see him. And once again, folks, you know, his smart money trading program, you can see the points there, the course, the three months of live sessions, the lifetime access to the smart money scans and the alerts, three months access to the premium smart money moves, all at uh, acornwealth.com slash win. And here we are.